from Kern Government Television. Welcome to this week's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting. Originating from the County Administrative Center, located at 1115 at Truxton Avenue in Bakersfield, California. Grounded in ideas, energy, and innovation, Kern County's vision is to be a driving force for the world's fifth largest economy. And our mission is to exceed expectations of the communities we serve, changing the way they feel about government, those who manage it, and the services it provides. Today's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting will convene momentarily. Good afternoon, call to order the afternoon session of the Tuesday, April 9th, 2024 meeting of the Board of Supervisors, the Board to reconvene. The first item is roll call. Supervisor Peters. Here. Supervisor Scrivener. Here. Supervisor Flores. Here. Supervisor Couch. Here. Supervisor Perez. Here. Thank you. The next uh, item is a report on actions taken in closed session. Uh, go to County Council, Ms. Rezon. Good afternoon. This morning in closed session, you met on items 85 through 88. There is no reportable action. Thank you. Next item is our consent agenda. All items listed with a CA above the item number considered to be routine and non-controversial by county staff. We can act on those all in one motion. There are 82 items on the afternoon agenda, starting on page two of the afternoon agenda all the way to page 15. Items one and two and 57 are not on the consent agenda, only those three. We're gonna be adding one uh, in a few moments, by the way. On items uh, 65 and 66 on the afternoon agenda, I need, a correct, need to read a correction into the record. Um, under both of those items, it will, there will be a, a recommended action, which is all in capital letters. You need to strike all of that and make the recommended action to continue those items, that's 65 and 66, to Tuesday, May 7th at 2 p.m. So is there anyone here that would like to make any comment or ask any questions about any items that are uh, on the consent agenda, which is all the items except for 1, 2, and 57? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon. Justin Powers, J-U-S-T-I-N, P-O-W-E-R-S. Thank you. Resident District 1. I'm speaking in support of item 50, proposed retroactive agreement with State of California. I just wanted to express my gratitude uh, for the county's partnership in applying for the local government neighbor to neighbor grant with the governor's office of planning and research. In particular, I wanted to thank Jim Damien and Bridget Guzman uh, for all their hard work from the uh, economic development office. Uh, for some background, this uh, California grant program was created primarily in response to the national epidemic of loneliness and isolation. As for me, I'm the founder of Kernville Cowork, as well as a nonprofit Sierra Shared Spaces. Both of these projects were started in part as a way of combating the loneliness crisis we're facing. I've been working a lot lately with my friend Tony Batchigalupo, the founder of the first modern co-working space in Manhattan, founder of belongfulness.com, where he is fighting the battle against loneliness in our society. Last year, Tony published a report on the state of belonging. I've learned from Tony that last year, the Surgeon General of the United States named loneliness as a primary health concern in our country. I highly recommend reading the Surgeon General's report titled, Our Epidemic of Loneliness and Isolation. Studies have shown that loneliness has the same impact on health outcomes as smoking 15 cigarettes a day and increases the risk of premature death by 26%. Through his work, Tony has clear advice for local governments on how to battle this loneliness crisis, which includes recommendations such as investing in local infrastructure, such as parks, community, community centers, and co-working spaces, as well as supporting community-based organizations that are already working to foster connections, both of which are supported by this grant. Sierra Shared Spaces and the other sub-grantees are excited to work with the county on this program to bring more programming and events to the communities of the Kern River Valley. They're designed to connect neighbors with neighbors and increase belonging in our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Any other speakers on the consent agenda items? Seeing none, I'll return to the board and look for a motion. Uh, Chairman, <clears throat> I'll make a motion to approve, but I'd uh, first just like to say uh, thank you to Mr. Powers and, and uh, his group and everybody that's been working on that. 
up in the Kern River Valley. I know how important that is for residents up there, so that's much appreciated. Thank you, Supervisor Peters. You got a motion? Second. And a second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. All ayes. Thank you. That takes us over to top of page two, item one, which is public presentations. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the board on any matter not on the agenda but other the jurisdiction of the board. We try to keep our comments to two minutes. Is there anyone here that would like to make a public presentation? <coughs> See some people leaving, so they don't want to. <laughs> Anybody staying want to? Okay, seeing none, we've got item two, which is board member announcements and reports. Supervisor Flores. Uh, thank you, Chairman Couch. Um, there is some cleanup legislation making its way through Sacramento at the moment. Assembly Bill 2911 McKinner, and it's going to the Committee on Elections. I'd like to make a referral to the CEO's office, uh, specifically Thomas Brown, our Chief Legislative Officer, uh, for our county to weigh in on in support of the bill and the amendments. Uh, the first bill was very restrictive to our board in terms of uh, finance limits. It would kind of, I believe, cripple the board and reduce us to inertia um, on some items, uh, the potential of items coming before us. So this would fix that, clean that up, and create a fairer uh, playing field. So uh, I'd like to make that referral. Can we get you to make a motion on sure, that? Sure, I, I would make a motion to that effect. Okay, we got a motion. Does anybody want to second that? Second. Second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. All ayes. Thank you. I don't see any other uh, lights on by the uh, Supervisor Press. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I wanted to bring to the attention of uh, this board and our chair, as well as our county council and CAO, this. After this morning's AM session, I was contacted by Mr. Paul Limfesti, who you may recognize his name. He is here on a pretty regular basis, usually speaks on the election matters, but also speaks on other matters. Today, he was speaking on the election matter. And as he left the podium and to return to his seat, Mr. Dennis McLean from the crowd uh, yelled to him, go sit down. And he, I oh, did not hear that portion. I don't know that if, if any of my colleagues heard that because I didn't hear it. Uh, but there was apparently some interaction there. Uh, just a few moments ago, Mr. Linfesti also informed me that at the uh, Board of Education meeting that Mr. McLean has also uh, come to him uh, and also in an unfriendly and unwelcoming manner has told Mr. Linfesti that he is not well liked here. And so uh, that has been brought to my attention. I'm not entirely sure what to do with that information other than to bring it to my board. I know Mr. Linfesti uh, is uh, certainly not happy about those experiences. I think he is hurt. He is an excellent citizen of this community, a uh, very respected person, uh, always treats others with respect, and apparently this is now multiple times in which he's having this experience. Uh, so uh, I don't know if I should make a referral as to looking into what we should do. I don't know if that's necessary. Perhaps somebody can help Mr. McLean understand that uh, the decorum and the respect that is, is traditional to uh, Kern County Board of Supervisors. I don't know if any of my colleagues would like to weigh in, you certainly don't have to, but I wanted to bring that matter to your attention. No, I uh, thank you, Supervisor Perez. I did hear it, and I was appalled by that, and it's, it's rude and obnoxious, and it's, it's, it's not becoming of the board uh, and, and for our public discourse, irrespective of the opinions given. Um, we should respect everyone's right to speak in, in, a, in a healthy manner, so uh, I also, uh, moving forward, I think we should be more mindful of that. Thank you, Chair, thank you so much. Seeing no others, um, we have to, we need to add a non-agenda item. So I'm gonna call for a motion to consider adding this non-agenda item, which will be item 55A. We need to make a finding that pest control advisors have informed the county of uh, the beet leafhoppers pest condition creating immediate peril to tomato crops after the posting of the agenda for the April 9th, 2024 meeting. Without immediate action being taken, the tomato crop in Kern County is at risk of failure. So um, I'd, I'm gonna risk, request a motion and a second so we can vote to add this uh, non-agenda item. Motion to approve. Second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved, all ayes. 
Thank you. Now we're going to hear that item, and it is a proposed resolution ratifying a proclamation of the local emergency due to the detection of the beet leafhoppers pest affecting the tomato crop here in Kern County. And I'm going to go to our CAO, our interim CAO. Interim. Ms. Uh, Martinez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you indicated, this item is requesting your board to adopt the resolution ratifying the declaration of local emergency due to the detection of the beet leaf hopper and invasive species. Pest control advisors inform county staff of the pest condition creating immediate peril to tomato crops. Without immediate action being taken, the tomato crop in Kern County is at risk of failure. The declaration of local emergency as allowed by the statute relaxes some regulatory requirements for the application of certain pesticides upon which the crop is highly reliant to combat beet leaf hoppers. This declaration was made in consultation with our agricultural commissioner who is also available to answer any questions your board may have. This concludes my prepared remarks and I'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any questions from the board so I'll open this to uh, any public comment before we take any action. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on this item? Seeing none, I'll return to the board and ask for a motion to approve and adopt the resolution. Motion to approve. Second. You have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. <coughs> the motion is approved. All ayes. All right. Thank you for that. That takes us over to item 57. on page 12 if you're following along. It is uh, under the County Administrative Office, the General Services Division, plan specifications and notice to contractors for, uh, is it Euford? Is that correct? Euford Park Restoration Project in Lake Isabella. And I'll go to open it up to <coughs> Mr. Jeff Hill, who heads up our General Services Division. Um, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Chairman Couch and members of the board. <coughs> Uh, as I've done recently several times and will continue to do over the course of the next year or so, I'm bringing uh, good news related to improvements in our parks. Um, item 57, before you is a request to approve, as you said, the plans and specifications for Euford, or as it's known locally, Tank Park, um, for the repair and restoration uh, project in the Kern River Valley. Um, now, as you know, in early 20. 23 tremendously high river flows in California. Um, during the, those high flows, Euford Park uh, co sustained considerable damage to the stream beds and park amenities in that park, uh, along with four other projects um, that I'll talk about after this item. Um, we've been working with uh, FEMA to get the park repaired with FEMA funds. <coughs> um, this slide indicates uh, the work that we have currently uh, completed under with FEMA funds. Um, we have uh, completed the park entrance paving, embankment, backfill, and light pole repair. These were the emergency projects that needed to, that needed to be performed um, uh, with under an emergency declaration uh, for that for that work. Um, the park restoration itself, <clears throat> you'll see in this slide, um, the scope of work is to install rock slope protection on the north and south sides of the park, and that's adjacent to two um, creeks that run adjacent to it, replacing a picnic table and safety place surfacing in the, in the play areas, uh, grading a new pea gravel surface at the tank monument out front, surf seating and aerating, and in installing a shade canopy in the play areas, and a horseshoe pit restoration, including new fencing. Um, this project, again, is funded by FEMA completely. I think we actually have 6.25% of the, of the funding for this. But the construction estimate is $956,000. Um, these, these pictures give you some, some visuals of the work that needed to be done to be completed uh, uh, in uh, sort of in the emergency um, portion of the project. And all of this will be repaired and uh, restored. You can see this is the horseshoe pit area. Um, the backboards were repainted and new fencing and gates. 
This slide shows the overall project. Um, there are elements throughout from the front, uh, from Lake Isabella Boulevard all the way back to the back um, of the project. Various things will be upgraded um, or will be repaired and restored. If your board approves uh, the, pro the, the plans and specifications today, uh, the bid opening is scheduled for June 11th and we'll be back to the board to issue, to award the contract on June 25th with construction starting in July and anticipated completion in November. Um, so that's really the brief overview of the project. Um, there are other, after, after I read the recommendations and you vote, I'd like to make a couple of other comments about some other projects both in District 3 and in District, uh, uh, District 1. Um, so, right now, um, it's recommended that your board make the finding that the project is categorically exempt from further environmental review per section 15301D of the state CEQA guidelines, approve the plans and specification, authorize the chairman to sign the plans, and authorize general services to uh, publish a notice to contractors in a newspaper of general circulation, current to public contract code 2125. The bid opening date is to be June 11th, 2024, at 11 a.m. at the General Services Office. Um, that's the end of my prepared comments. I'm available for any questions you may have. Um, and again, I'd like you to return to me after, after the vote. Thank you. Supervisor Peters. Thank you, <coughs> Chairman Couch. Uh, Director Hill, I just wanted to say I, how much I appreciate uh, your department's work on, on these parks up there and, and throughout the county. I know that there's... Uh, uh, a lot going on, and especially in the Kern River Valley, they uh, they got hit hard up there. Um, two of the, two of the main parks up there, Tank Park and Riverside Park, just got absolutely <coughs> thrashed in uh, the storms that we had. And uh, you guys got on it. Uh, may not seem quick to to some of the residents up there, but in the grand scheme of everything that was going on, I know you guys got on it as quick as possible and uh, working to build those back. Uh, as quickly as you can for the community. So I really appreciate that. Uh, one thing <clears throat> I wanted to uh, ask if you could just clarify um, just for the community. I know when people hear FEMA is funding something that they worry that that's gonna you know, ex increase the length of time it takes to complete that project. But as I understand it, we're not waiting on FEMA funding. We're moving forward with constructing these parks and then we're waiting on reimbursements from FEMA. Is that, is that correct? Uh, Supervisor Peters to the chair, yes, you're correct. Um, it, it funds in arrears, it funds when the project is complete, so the general fund is supporting the project um, up until the time that the project is complete, um, and then we will receive the funds at some point after, uh, after that, um, uh, but the project is not waiting for money. Great, well, <clears throat> I appreciate that, and then uh, if you are already planning on talking about it, I won't, uh, won't, won't ask you about it right now, but I just want to make sure uh, if uh, in your later remarks you could touch on Riverside Park and uh, maybe the skate park and other projects that are going on up there, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any other lights on, so I'm going to ask if there's anyone here who'd like to make a public comment on this item. Seeing none, I'll return to the board for question. any other questions or comments or maybe a motion. Well, just before we make the motion, I'd like to turn it to go back to uh, I'm sorry. Mr. Hill to uh, make any other remarks. Mr. Hill, I forgot all this. about you. I, I don't have any remark, further remarks about um, about this item, oh, but okay. I will talk after you guys vote. Um, okay. I, just as a matter of, of that, I, I, I don't have, um, I, don't, I wasn't prepared for an update on the skate park today. That's fine. But, I just want to um, touch on Riverside Park. But all the other projects, yes. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, make a motion to approve. Second. Let's cast your votes. The motion is approved, all ayes. Thank you. Mr. Hill. So to the, um, to the three other projects, these are all FEMA-funded projects. Um, again, I think at the end of the day, we will have six and a quarter percent of the total project cost of these. But Riverside Park restoration, and there is the Riverside Park embankment restoration. Now, this is all impacts that occurred to Riverside Park in Kernville. But because the embankment um, restoration component of the project will very likely involve 
um, Army Corps of Engineers, um, uh, Fish and Wildlife, and a bunch of other permitting agencies. We've broken that project off independently so we can continue with the work uh, in the park proper. So the, the Riverside Park Restoration um, project, we expect to come back to your board May 7th for that project. Um, uh, and then uh, back, to the, back to the board in July with notice to proceed in August and completion in January 2025. As far as the embankment restoration, we expect to be before the board in October of this year, um, identify a contractor in July, notice to proceed in March, uh, with notice of completion in June of 2025. Uh, again, that is for the embankment repair, not the park repair. And we're able to separate those both. FEMA has allowed it, um, and it's just a good idea. What it, that's fiscally responsible for us because we'll be able to get paid on the park po portion before we're paid on the, um, on the embankment repair. And then part of this, this is District 3. Uh, par, uh, there is a significant impact to Hart Park embankment uh, along the river as well. And that project really mirrors the Riverside Park embankment repair project with coming to the board in October, uh, approving the low bidder in January, construction starting in March, uh, for that notice of completion in August of 2025. So those are the updates for the current, for the, really it's the FEMA projects uh, that General Services is doing. That's, I think that, uh, there are other departments that are working on other FEMA projects, but that's ours. So any questions on that part? No, good no, news. Uh, Thank thanks you. again for all your work. Excellent, and then <clears throat> I, as always, um, that's on my screen, but the Adopt-A-Park program, I wanna continue to, I wanna continue to bang the drum on this because we're getting good traction and I'm happy to see it. Um, again, we're happy to work meaningfully with community groups to help keep all of our parks in great shape. Um, we're getting organizations to sign up for the Adopt-A-Park program and currently have the Greenfield Walking Group as an Adopt-A-Park partner for Greenfield Park. Faith in the Valley is a recent partner in the Adopt-A-Park program for Ford City. Um, uh, Jessica Subia from the South of the Tracks organization is, uh, is on board with Bell Terrace Park and the Kern River Parkway Foundation is, uh, is doing work in Hart Park. <clears throat> so we're happy to have them on board. We're, it's getting more and more traction. Uh, also, the National Jet Boat Association is doing work under a GSA, not Adopt a Park, at uh, Lake Ming, which is good to see. And Current Energy has requested an application, but we haven't seen their, uh, their application returned. Um, Additionally, we've been approached by the National Ski Patrol for collaboration with them to provide bike patrol along the bike path from Buena Vista to Lake Ming. Uh, the city of Bakersfield is working with them, so, uh, so there will be continuous, a continuous agreement through the city and the county from uh, Buena Vista to Lake Ming. Uh, our parks team will be attending a meeting this week and are working with the uh, National Ski Patrol to assess community interest and we'll be attending a, a meeting later this week about that. Um, we have a sample agreement that, uh, ha that I'll review with county council to make sure it's something that we can, we can sign and if there's significant interest in that bike patrol, ski patrol, um, uh, we expect to bring it back to the board for your consideration. And that's the end of my updates and I'm available for any questions about those items. I don't see any. You've done an excellent job. And that takes us to the end of the afternoon agenda. I just need a motion to adjourn to Tuesday, April 23rd at 9 a.m. So moved. No objection, we're adjourned. Thank you.